here's what I'd like you to do. Just hide that blue graph for a second. So just tap on the, um, on the circle over here so it disappears. You can get rid of this slider if you like. We're going to um, not need it for now. And now, instead of having a polynomial, right, x to the power of a thing, x to the power of some number, okay, what I want us to do is reverse that, okay, so we want to have not x to the power of something, but something to the power of x. Now, that something is going to be really important. Um, I want us to muck about with it a little bit. So in here, I'm going to put in just the letter a, that's going to be my base down here, okay. Um, we'll add a slider in a second, but just back on this keyboard. Um, this is the button you want to get to the power, or you could have um, done the hat button on your um, keyboard if you like. It's up the top now, and I want to make x the exponent there. Okay. Now I'm going to add my slider. All right, now, before we muck about and slide this thing around, um, what is this graph right now? This is, what graph is this? Have a look. Have a look at a particular value of a. Desmos, when, it, when you ask for a slider, Desmos always defaults to this value. So a at the moment is a equals 1. So this is 1 to the power of x. So it's just 1 all the way. That's why it's a horizontal line, yeah? Make sense? Okay. Here's what I'd like us to do. Change that value, um, or rather change this, um, go to this little cog um, up above here. And you can see in here, you can change the domain of A, the values that A is allowed to take. For the purposes of illustration, what I'd like us to do is make the lower boundary 1 and the top boundary 5 should do it. So put a 1 in there on the left and then put a 5 over there on the right. You got that? Does that make sense? Right, so I got to, I got to this screen by hitting the cog and then I can press that and press done. Now I get this. Okay, so does yours look like mine now? You see, before we had negative 10 and 10, those was, that was our domain for A. Now I've got 1 and 5. Give me a thumbs up if you've got that. Yep. Okay, now you've got that now. Please go ahead and play with A. Change it and see what happens. So this is, say it again, Sarang. This is an exponential curve, right? We've got X in the exponent. That's why we call this an exponential curve. And you can see what happens is as the value of A increases, you get an exponential curve that's kind of, well, it's steeper over here and it's shallower over here. Okay, it's dancing around. All right, very good. Now, what I'd like you to do is just um, hit pause and um, take a, put it somewhere around two. Two will do it for us. Okay, um, that's close enough for me. All right, now remember, we looked at x squared, x cubed, x to the power of four, and we looked at its derivatives. I deliberately asked you to hide the derivative here. We're going to bring it back in a second. But before you do that, I want you to think with me. How would you describe the gradient of this function as it changes over time? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it changed? Can someone tell me anything about the gradient function of this? Say it again. OK, so let me take that phrase, a constant gradient increase. So I want to sort of unpack that, right? I'm going to start at the end, actually. What do you mean by gradient Increase? Actually, I'm going to ask someone else what they think Serene means. Why would he use a phrase like gradient increase? Okay, I think Ben's exactly right. This thing gets steeper and steeper and steeper as you go along. So we should be expecting our gradient to be increasing. That constant question is a bit harder to answer, isn't it? Because you're like, how much is it increasing over time? Um, like, I'm not instinctively sure. Like, I can't eyeball that and say, oh, I know it's going to be going up this much or that much. But I think we agree it's increasing. Um, can someone tell me, is the gradient negative or zero or positive? What can you tell me about it? About its sign? Hmm. Go back. Do you remember when I had um, x to the power of 4 on here? Do you remember that guy? Right? And then we saw when you had this side of x to the power of 4, the graph was going down, right? And what did that tell you about the derivative? The derivative was negative, right? Are there any parts of this graph that are going down? Answer, no. So I shouldn't have, I shouldn't expect any parts of the derivative to be negative. Are there any parts that are flat, that are, sta that are stationary points? Any spots? Is there any spot where it's like, boom, I'm not moving anywhere, I'm not going down? Um, I think Will's instincts are right. I'm getting a shake of the head. Ishan, what are you thinking? Uh, everything, what do you mean by everything after zero? <laughs> That's okay. I mean, Sophie, what are you thinking? 
Ah, uh, you're saying, I, I want to unpack this phrase here because this is interesting to me. Uh, okay, so th- you're actually both using different language to talk about the same thing. just want to come back to Sophie's phrase. Sophie said that the gradient's approaching zero. Where were you referring to that, Sophie? Oh, sorry. Well, no, no, no. I, I think that's important. I just want to know where. Like, um, but, like, it's going down, like, that way. Yeah, okay, so if you're reading from right to left, right? If you zoomed in, in fact, go ahead and do this now. Zoom in on um, the left-hand side of the graph, right? If you zoom in far enough, it starts to look like it's really, really shallow. Do you notice that, right? It's not exactly horizontal. Do you agree? Yeah. Um, you can try and get quite close to horizontal, go further and further to the left, but it never gets there exactly, okay? All right, now, what we all did was we hid this derivative function. Do you remember that? Okay, can you make it reappear? Just hit that circle, and that blue graph will come back. Okay, do you have this? Is this what you got? You got the two there? Okay. So we've got our red graph, which is 2 to the power of x, roughly. And then you've got this derivative, which is just beneath it. Do you see that? So far, so good. Okay. So what are we observing? You've got this exponential function, the red one, and its derivative is another exponential function. Just think about that for a second. This is kind of unusual because when we had a look at those previous functions, right? When you differentiated something like x squared, what did it become? 2x. 2x, very good. So a parabola turned into a straight line when you differentiated, yeah? Uh, Then when we had a look at the cubic, what did we get as our derivative this time? 3x squared, very good. So this cubic shape, the sort of like weird snaky looking thing, it got a whole new shape when we looked at its derivative. It became a parabola, right? But when you have a look at the exponential function, it doesn't do that. It doesn't turn into a whole new kind of graph. It just kind of turns into a different version of itself. Does that make sense? Okay, now just like before, and I'm not going to do it this time on the screen. I want you to do it. Oh, sorry, Serene, do you have a question? You sure? Yeah. All right, so that's okay. Come back to us. Um, Just like before, I'd like you to slide around A. Can you do that, please, on your screen? I want you to slide it around. I'm not going to do it up here. I want you to do it. And I want you to tell me if you notice anything unusual. What did you notice? I'm just letting it play now. Did you notice there was kind of like a special value of A somewhere in between here? Did you notice that? Um, Let me just hit pause back at x A equals 2. Sorry. It's hard to be precise on an iPad. That'll do about there. Oh, there we go. Bang on. We noticed in this case, here's our red function, our original one. Derivative was just beneath it. Did you notice that? An exponential was just beneath. But at a certain point, for example, if you went to A equals 3, just slide it up there. You're like, whoa, hold on a second. Our blue graph, which is our derivative, it's no longer below my exponential. Where is it? It's just above, all the way along. It's just above, just above, just above. Some of you might have noticed somewhere between 2 and 3, there's this magic spot where it lines up. Try and get it close, right? Um, if you want to try and make it easier for you to get it close, remember how um, I changed these ba- boundary values from 1 to 5? Do you remember that? You can change it again. Change it from two to three, and then you'll get a bit more precision on that slider. Yes, because you were in a different class at that point, so. Okay, very good. So hopefully, I'm going to try and get it uh, with my fingers, which will be really tough. Hopefully, you've noticed it's almost exactly at two point. Let me try and get there. Seven, one, uh, a little bit further over. It's, and you can get closer and closer, right? You can change these values to try and get as precise as you can, okay? But at a certain point, they seem to sit right on top of each other, okay? Now, um, if you haven't already, could you reach for your calculator? Get your calculator out of your bag. I left mine in my bag. This number that you just sort of stumbled on, it's been in your calculator this whole time. Uh, turn your calculator on, right? And then what I want you to do is go all the way to the bottom of the calculator, down where my finger is. Have a look where my finger is. You see uh, middle button on the bottom row. Middle middle button on the bottom row. Okay. Do you notice there's a couple of, well, there's probably, depending on your calculator, it might be slightly different. I've got a couple of different letters above that button, right? One's in red and one's in uh, yellow. Do you have the yellow number? What's that? It's pi, right? That's not the, that, we know that what pi is. That's not pi. But the other number there, the other letter rather, it says E. So go ahead to get to it because it's red. You need to press the alpha button. Press the alpha button. Press that and E comes up in your display and then just hit equals. 
then just hit equals. And you should have a number. Do you see it there? You got it? I'd like us all to write down the number you see in your display. Write down that number, please. Maybe you guys can 